My name is John Bradshaw and I'm the author of Cat Sense, The Feline Enigma Revealed, which is uh, in some senses the follow-up to In Defence of Dogs. But of course, uh, it's this time it's about cats and it's about all of the science that has been discovered over the past decade or so that hasn't really got through to cat owners. So it's how to understand your cat, and how to make your cat's life better. I think there are possibly two reasons why cats are so popular today. One is that they're simply a very convenient pet. They're easy to keep in towns and cities. They're much easier to keep than dogs are. You don't have to walk them. Uh, but also, I think they're very cute. I mean, I think they have features which trigger very instinctive reactions in people uh, and make them want to look after them. Cats have a, a long history with mankind. They, they go back about 10,000 years, to, right to the dawn of agriculture, when we started encouraging them to come into our uh, barns and so on to hunt the mice that had accumulated there. So the cat has basically got almost 10,000 years of history as a hunter behind it, and, and we've been encouraging them to do that all of that time. Um, so it's something that they find very difficult to switch off. And of course, some cats are still kept as hunters. Meanwhile, in towns and cities, cat owners suddenly become revulsed by the idea that their cat is going to drag um, a bloody mouse in through the cat flap. It's just not something that cats can change overnight. Cats don't have very expressive faces, uh, in direct contrast to the dog, which has an incredibly expressive face and an expressive tail and everything else. Um, cats evolved as solitary animals. They only really became social when they started their association with mankind. And so um, they don't actually have a full repertoire of facial expressions in the way that we do. So they can seem rather aloof indeed, but um, they're doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that they don't love us, but they, because they do. Their first point of attachment is to the place where they live, certainly, and that's really why cats, for example, try and find their own way home if their owners move house. The first thing you need to do if you want a lovable cat is to pick the right one. I mean, cats vary tremendously in personality, and also they vary in the extent to which they've been introduced to people uh, when they're kittens. So if you go to a farm and pick up an eight-week-old kitten that hasn't been handled very much, it will be much harder to form a bond with that kitten, or at least that kitten will find it much harder to form a bond with you, than if you go to a place where the, the kittens are living in a house and have been handled a lot. So that's the, the, really the first thing. They learn how to interact with people between about four to eight weeks of age, uh, and then they learn a lot more after that, but what they learn at that very early stage is very, very important. Cats naturally run away from things that they feel slightly anxious about. So by imposing yourself on a cat, you'll probably actually make the cat more nervous rather than less nervous. What you need to do is let the cat come to you and then reward it for coming to you with something really tasty, a little bit of food that the cat really likes. It's kind of bribery, but it works. And uh, once you've done that a few times, you will find the cat coming up to you spontaneously and then accepting a tickle behind the ears and all the, the sorts of things that cats like. It's a process that has to be done gradually, but it does work. Well, cats, I think, face a couple of challenges uh, in the modern world. I mean, they are very convenient pets, but um, because we're keeping them in ever-increasing numbers, they inevitably bump into other cats that they don't know. People in the street, you know, many people in the street will have a cat. The cats didn't choose to live next door to each other, even if the people did. And so they have difficulty sometimes in getting on with the neighbour's cat. One of the main reasons for cats being taken to the vet uh, is, t is for wounds sustained during cat fights. Um, some of the other reasons are things like skin problems and cystitis, both of which are now known to be made worse by the stress of living next door to a cat that they don't get on with. Cats are descended from solitary ancestors. They, um, uh, they don't really have the social graces that dogs do, so they do find it rather difficult to get on with other cats, particularly ones that don't like them. My favourite uh, mysterious fact about cats is that they have two noses. And I don't mean two nostrils, of course they have two nostrils, but they have another nose between what we see as their nose, the nostrils, and the roof of their mouth. And they use this to analyse the smell of other cats, to see who's in the neighbourhood. And you can tell when your cat's using that, when it walks up to something, maybe a twig in the garden that another cat has scent marked, and curls its top lip back. It's a piece of behaviour that doesn't even have an English name. It's known technically by its German name, Flemen. Uh, and what's happening there is the cat is opening up its second nose to sample the smell of that other cat and store it away for future use.